Hello out there, you wonderful people. This is Andre, the Game Idea Guy. Thank you once again for lending me your time and your ear listening in to another Gamer's Thoughts discussion. I was going to say video, but you're just going to be looking at a screen that has the Labo VR headset on it and a few words. So <laughs> if you're looking, um, this is best. This is one of those videos. It's just best to just listen rather than watch, obviously. But that being said, I've never given my thoughts on Ninten Nintendo Labos. Gosh, I almost flubbed that up. I never gave my thoughts on Nintendo Labo. And honestly, I was very skeptical that Nintendo would step into VR with the Nintendo Switch. I was highly skeptical of it. I even made a post on Twitter about with my doubt about it because I just didn't think it was plausible. I mean, I figured it was possible. I didn't think it was something they would do, though. Just because I, I like all the things I remember hearing about VR requiring at least like 1440p and like 90 frames per second in order for it to be feasible for a lot of people to be able to to look at it and stuff like that. Because of like issues with motion sickness and things of that nature. But <clears throat> if Nintendo has found a way to negate those things, then that could actually be really good. I just, with no experience with VR myself, I have no way to um, say that these things are accurate. So I could only go by what I've heard. Um, so I, I truly have no idea how all this is going to boil down or how it's going to work out. But it does bring a few things to mind that I swear I've said before. <laughs> and one of those was, honestly, it was how Bethesda brought games like Skyrim and Doom to the Nintendo Switch while they were working on VR versions of their games. Where you have the VR version of Skyrim and you have the VR version of Doom. And it just makes me think, well, hell, third parties can get in on this. Anybody who's putting a first person shooter on a Switch could get in on this. They can put in a VR mode for the Nintendo Switch for those who would want it and just patch it in. Why couldn't you have a VR mode for uh, Skyrim on the Switch? Why not? And honestly, at this point, it would be roughly the same cost to get a VR headset and a, a loan <laughs> for you to get the Switch, get the uh, game you want to play in VR, and then get the, <laughs> get the Labo kit for VR. It would be roughly the same as getting a VR headset itself just by cost. It would literally be around the same pricing. Yeah, I think you'd also have to have a second set of controllers, so it'd be roughly a little bit more. But think about that. When you have to buy a PS4 Pro and a PSVR, that's going to what, be about seven, eight hundred bucks. Ugh. Gosh, that's a <laughs> that's up there. And then you still have to buy the games. Getting the PC. Where you gotta get the a decent PC, which can range you anywhere from six hundred towards like a thousand dollars, just to have a PC that has the parts in it that are compatible with VR headsets, and then the VR headsets themselves are again they're like three hundred to like five or six hundred dollars, roughly depending on the brand and the model of the VR headset that you purchase. And if you purchase one of the older sets, you still have all of the work and cords that you have to set up and have all over the place. So, yeah, you come out majorly cheaper with Nintendo's alternative. <laughs> like, that's the, that's the thing I think a lot of people would, would look at. And that'll probably be what gets, a, gets more people into VR because they'll look at the price range. Just thinking that up off the top of my head. So now this opens up so many third parties who want to put their games in a VR situation, but they don't want to spend a crap ton of money to do it. Hey, you got Nintendo Switch Labo VR. Less money to put into it. 
Your consumers have less money to spend to get everything. And you still relatively get a similar effect. I just. It's just in my mind. From a consumer standpoint. If I were going to jump into VR. This is probably the way I'd do it. For, for video games. This is probably the way I would do it. It just. When you think up the total cost of everything. This makes more sense. And it, and it would be a lot easier on the consumer. That that I'm sorry, it's just my thoughts. I'd be like, yeah, you could say the, the Nintendo Labo headset is cheap because it's made out of cardboard. <laughs> I don't think too many people give a damn. <laughs> to be fully honest, unless you are one of those people who has to have the top notch best. Of everything, you're probably not gonna care. Moms and dads aren't gonna care. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, I can get my kid a VR headset, and all I have to do is buy a Nintendo Switch in this box. Pfft, fuck it. <laughs> I mean, like, in, in college students on a budget to look at, like, shoot, I can get VR? I can play some VR games? And not to mention that the VR, the Nintendo Labo VR set comes with its own set of games anyway. So you have a testing bed for it to see how well you can acclimate yourself to it. So it basically comes with a bunch of tutorials. So there is a value proposition there that Nintendo is putting in front of people. That's not a hard choice to make if that's what you're with. And if you're coming from the ground up, again, just like I said, well, you're coming from the ground up wanting to do VR. This is the cheapest option. This is legitimately the cheapest option. Yeah, I think you probably would be spending around probably like I'm not even doing the math. I'm, this is just rough estimates off the top of my head. You probably be spending around like six at most, I think, like six, six fifty. I could be wrong. Again, I'm not actually doing the cost in my head. I'm just giving quick, rough estimates. <clears throat> and, that, and I feel like I'm overshooting, honestly. It's probably more like 550 But it, it is legitimately the cheapest VR option out there. And all these companies who have VR versions of their games that are on other platforms could literally patch in VR for their Nintendo Switch versions. That's all Bethesda would have to do. And if they're making other games, they're also going to have VR versions on other platforms where you have to purchase that version separately. You get more value out of the version on the Nintendo Switch. Even if it runs worse and looks worse than the other versions, you get more value out of the Nintendo Switch version. Because there are multiple different ways to be able to play the games. I mean, it's not like that wasn't already the case out of the box. But they've just now added another option. <clears throat> and I, I know somebody who's going to probably just <laughs> like anybody who's listening to me talk about Nintendo Labo should remember I made the quip about having a VR, not VR, but having a Nintendo Labo kit that would, li would allow you to play Metroid. Now, <laughs> this, this is a little bit of an extreme of a case, but if you combine the Robo kit with the VR kit, I could see, <laughs> I could see there being a lot of VR games that work extremely well with that combination. And it could work with a Metroid game or even like a, a Kaiju monster game if somebody really wanted to do one. There's a bunch of options that these kits open up for the player and for the companies making the games if only they would spend the time doing it. And I can see the potential in it. Which is why I did this, doing this, why I'm doing this discussion in the first place. I'm getting tongue tied again. 
But there are a ton of options that Nintendo is creating for game developers for their platform. And they're not using them. You can combine a VR headset with any of the other other uh, Labo gear and can completely make a brand new video game experience for people. Hell, think of playing a game. Uh, I'm just going to pick one off the top of my head. Rush. What was it? Rush 2049 or 2099 or something in that. Pl playing that game in VR. That would be awesome. Or a, a, another wild game like Crazy Taxi. Playing it with Labo VR and you're using the steering wheel. Would be awesome. <laughs> like the, the, like that's the that's the thing that I don't think people are looking at. There are options for these games. If only the other developers outside of Nintendo would do something with it. And I hope that Nintendo is smart enough to go ahead and patch in <clears throat> a VR mode for Mario Kart. I have a feeling they will cuz obviously they're going to be patching in the modes for uh the VR modes for um Mario Odyssey. And Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I really don't see the need for it for either of those games. But hell, if the option's there, use it. <laughs> like that's that's what I say. Just use it. And again, Nintendo's like I, I really wish Nintendo would would partner with a third party and have a third party branded Nintendo Labo set. That's something I really want to see them do with the with this uh, innovation of theirs. I want to see them do that because it could be interesting. Like, and I do want to see different versions of Labo, not just the cardboard one. Like, give us versions of it that have sturdier materials with plastics. People will pay more money for those because they know those items will last longer. <laughs> It'll be like, yeah, I know it'll be it'll be more costly to put out, but I also realize like there are some people who may not want to do the cardboard thing mm -hmm. just because they're worried about how easy it is to tear apart. Yes, the cardboard is easy to replace, and they have things online to show you how to build these items with from scratch with cardboard. But you, but you know, there are a lot of lazy people that aren't going to look it up and that aren't going to attempt to do it. So this is why I say they, they should have other versions out there. Like it's not something that they have to do in the immediate, but I think before the switches lifetime is over, it would be a good idea to refresh Labo with some plastic kits where all of the parts just have to be popped out, put together and have some sort of hook to hold them together um <clears throat> i know it would be a lot of work <laughs> like, but again it's just thinking of how it works for the consumer and how much better it can make the product but that's really it um but go ahead list whatever labo ideas or vr ideas you have down in the description not in the description gosh <laughs> You can't write in the description um, <laughs> down in the comments for uh, for this, like because it's an interesting concept, and I could see a lot of possibilities for it. And there are some games that I'm already thinking about that I'm going to do videos or discussions for. I already have one out the way that could make use of this. So, <clears throat> and they're going to be pitch for switch videos, obviously, um, <laughs> but. It is just things that I've, I've quickly figured out really quickly with. Why did I use that word twice? The things that I figured out in a very short amount of time that I think would work very well with Nintendo Labo VR. If they had that mode in it, but like with like plus some of these games I was already thinking about anyway for the switch just because of the fact that it has so many different varying controls games and how they would work. But I'm going to save that for those moments. And that's it. Thank you guys very much for listening. Keep your eyes and ears out.
for more stuff from me. And until the next time, please enjoy your games and peace out.